So iOS 15.4 Developer Beta 2 was released today, and although there aren't a ton of new features, there are a few, but despite that, there's still a lot to talk about with Developer Beta 2. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So of course, when you first set up Developer Beta 2 for iOS 15.4, you're greeted with the Hello screen. Uh, on both your iPad, if you're running iPad OS 15.4 or your iPhone for that matter. But one thing you'll definitely notice is a little bit different than normal is the improved Siri and dictation splash screen that appears. And that's kind of, kind of out of the blue, right? We already set that up. Why is this appearing again? Well, the reason for that is because of a bug in iOS 15 that would send those Siri recordings to Apple even if you opted out. So in iOS 15.2, Apple silently disabled Siri recording sharing for many users. Now with the second beta of iOS 15.4, which was just released today, this issue was resolved and then you're prompted with the splash screen for improved Siri and dictation again. So that way you can opt out again. And for the record, Apple notes that they have deleted any audio that they received inadvertently due to the bug. What do you guys think about that? Let me know down below in the comment section. Also, if you appreciate videos like this, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and let other people know that this video is legit. And also hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. Okay, so moving on to the next little feature here. Of course, in the previous beta, we had the ability to use Face ID with the mask. And now in iOS 15.4 developer beta 2, if you're wearing a mask when unlocking, you may notice this new prompt. So we have our mask, I'm gonna go ahead and put that on, and then I'll try to unlock my iPhone. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here's the iPhone, and hold it up, and the iPhone unlocks. But of course, first it asks me to look down to unlock, and the reason for this is the periocular support obviously can't recognize the bottom of your face because it's covered by a mask. Instead, it just simply focuses here, so you wanna look down so it can actually recognize that small little area of your face for it to unlock. So the next new feature here that you'll find is an update to the Magnifier app. And like I said, iOS 15.4 Developer Beta 2 isn't, isn't inundated with tons of new features, right? But this is a new feature that you'll notice if you tap the little camera button uh, right here within the Magnifier, you can choose your camera lens. So you have auto, close up, and front, right? So that's a little bit different than what we saw in Developer Beta 1. So you'll notice that the close-up uh, has the same little macro icon that you get for macro mode on the iPhone 13 Pro. So here's how it looked on the previous beta. Doesn't have that pop out and then you have auto, telephoto, macro, etc. So with the previous beta, it appears you had just a, a little bit more fine grain control being able to directly choose that telephoto lens instead of it you know, dynamically switching in the auto mode. But here's a question that I've always wanted to ask, and I want you guys to let me know down below in the comments. Do you actually use the Magnifier app for anything? Like, do you actually think, oh, I can use the Magnifier app for that? I've never thought that. Let me know down below what you guys think. So unless you were living under a rock today, you probably heard that Apple announced a new tap to pay feature that turns iPhones into contactless payment terminals. And this is something that's coming this spring via third parties. So it means that this actually isn't a native iOS feature, but rather Apple is opening up the NFC chip to third party payment platforms. So they'll be able to create applications to enable tap to pay. So it's a cool feature, but it's not something that you'll just be able to natively use like you can use Apple Pay today, right? Or Apple Pay Cash, for instance. So really, this has more of a business side implication. So business brands like Shopify, Point of Sale will be able to implement this into their apps, use that NFC, and accept payments that way. And as the year goes on, this will roll out to more platforms and more apps. But here's what's cool iOS 15.4 Beta 2 already implements some of the frameworks that developers need to use this new feature. And these frameworks actually reveal some of the details of how this is gonna work for vendors. And one big takeaway is that it's not just limited to contactless cards and Apple Pay, but really any other contactless payment devices. So customers that use Google Pay or Samsung Pay will be able to use Tap to Pay. And if you're rocking an older phone, something older than the iPhone XS or XR, 
then yeah, you won't be able to use this feature because it requires background tag reading technology, which was implemented starting with those devices. So hopefully this is just getting the ball rolling and hopefully we'll see an iPad with NFC, which would make just like the perfect terminal, right? Another new feature, well, I won't say it's a new feature, but it's more like a fix, the share play button in the share sheet. In the previous beta, it was a little misaligned here in iOS 15.4 beta two. Apple cleaned it up a bit. It looks obviously a lot better than it did on the previous beta. And this is a great feature. It surfaces share play, makes it much more of a presence within iOS, whereas before it was kind of hidden. I really appreciate this update. Here's how it actually looked on the previous beta, by the way. You can see how that alignment is just way off. All right, so now let's talk about the next feature, and that is the iCloud.com uh, the ability to disable iCloud.com access. But it looks like Apple has changed the server side setting because this feature is no longer present in beta one either. Uh, but once it does launch, what this feature is gonna allow you to do is to disable iCloud.com data access. So you won't be able to access iCloud mail or contacts or calendar, photos, notes, reminders, files from iCloud.com. A nice security option for sure. Hopefully it comes back in upcoming beta releases. So also we talked about none other than universal control. I actually did a video on the universal control showing that you could use it with up to seven devices or probably more. I'm just limited to the amount of devices I have on hand. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out because I did a really deep dive in a universal control, all the ins and outs, all the features and options and, and check boxes and pretty much everything you could do to configure universal control in Mac OS 12.3 beta. What do you guys think about universal control though? Do you think it's a good feature? Do you think it's a gimmick? Do you plan on using it? I personally think it's a great feature. I think it's much more useful than something like Sidecar, uh, where you can use your iPad as an external display for your Mac. I think universal control is awesome. So while we're sort of pivoting over to the Mac, let's talk about one additional Mac OS feature in Mac OS 12.3 beta two. It addresses the Bluetooth related battery drain. So some people were experiencing an issue where when you put your MacBook to sleep, the Bluetooth would stay active and eventually drain your battery, unfortunately. And there are some workarounds. Obviously you could disable Bluetooth beforehand, but that's super inconvenient, especially if you use a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. There's even a utility that would disable Bluetooth before sleeping. Uh, but that issue appears to have been fixed in this beta. Shout out to Mr. Macintosh. You can check his link down below uh, for more details. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at iOS 15.4 developer beta two. What do you guys think about it? Let me know down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.